At the time I was working at uh, Island Studios as one of the in-house engineers and uh, I got a phone call from the manager saying, oh, there's this new band called The Smiths coming in, would you be interested in doing the session? And I literally kind of jumped out of the chair. Having seen them play on top of the pops for this charming man, I was absolutely smitten by them. I thought they were fantastic. So I've, I just jumped at the chance and said, yes, obviously, I'd love to do the session. They came in with John Porter and we recorded um, the single Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now, along with um, a version of Gene, uh, which Sandy Shaw uh, was to sing on, and um, Girl Afraid. And the session went very well, they took my name and number, and um, I thought, great, you know, hopefully I'll be involved in the next session. As it turned out, the next session they did was uh, for William, it was really nothing, and they didn't use me, so I thought, well, okay, I've blown that one, it's, uh, it's not going to happen. But uh, fortunately, um, a few months later, Jeff Travis called and said, Stephen, uh, they, the boys want to do the next album, not with John Porter, but with yourself. Would you be interested? And of course, um, I jumped at the chance. The thing that first struck me about the Smiths was the, the metre of the voice and everything. It was completely different to anything else that's out there. Um, I was completely entranced by the sound of his voice and also by the performance, as I say, on Top of the Pops. Top of the Pops, it was just wonderful. And the sound of Johnny's guitar playing was, uh, you know, to hear kind of this kind of multi-layered, but yet at the same time clear guitar parts kind of uh, going together was, you know, it was fantastic. So, you know, it was really kind of, kind of the kind of thing I wanted to be involved with as a as an engineer, hopeful producer, you know. Um, so it it just felt like um, it was the right thing to do. It's funny around that time, kind of early '80s, there was a very strong electro kind of influence. There was lots of bands like Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark and Soft Cell. Uh, you know, Duran Duran, obviously, where things seem to be very electronic and, and quite uh, kind of cold sounding in some ways. Um, but um, the, the fact there was this band called The Smiths, which was such a kind of different kind of type of name compared to a lot of those other kind of bands, kind of new romantic bands or whatever, uh, it really made them stand out. And uh, as I say, the, the fact that Morrissey sang completely different to everyone else, I mean, uh, most singers in the UK tend to try and kind of sing like their American counterparts most of the time. Whereas here was someone that was doing something that was distinctly British uh, and just really original. When they came in to do the session they were very well rehearsed. At that time the Smiths were working incredibly hard. They were either on tour or they were in the studio and, and they were very tight-knit. It was a real, real tight-knit feel to the whole thing. Um, and um, they were very quick, you know, there wasn't much mucking about, very, very professional, got the job done. And again, you know, for me, the most, the, the most exciting point of the session often, and this happened right throughout, was when Johnny and the boys had put down a really good backing track and then you hear Morrissey sing his vocal for the first time. And you think, aha, uh -huh, yeah, this, I can see now where the peaks are and where it's, where it's really going to kind of go. And, uh, you know, that's the th that was one of the, again, one of the first things that kind of inspired me on that session was just hearing the way he sang, again, his metre, his, the way his lyric fitted into each line. Um, it was, you know, it was a revelation.